We're able to stitch images together on the order of, you know, a frame per second for display scale, or we can put the whole image together in, on the order of, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. So I'm Steve Feller. We're at Duke University. I'm a... Uh, Associate in Research in the Electrical Engineering Department. So essentially what we have is we have a system with 98 individual focal planes that would be 14 megapixel cameras each. But by putting them together and looking at their overlap, we're able to generate gigapixel scale images. It's a real-time, uh, say, gigapan or panoramic stitching system. So as opposed to a conventional camera that tries to map everything onto a focal plane, we're trying to map everything onto a sphere. But then on the back of that sphere, we use uh, these micro-optics to do local correction of the spherical distortion. We decouple the stitching from the, the model that we use to stitch. So in a conventional image, you have a whole bunch of pictures taken, and then you find relevant features that match between images, and you warp the images so that you can present a cohesive, uh, a single display that everything, uh, a single image of the whole scene. But instead of doing that for every frame, we just take the pixels coming off the cameras, we feed it through a model, and that allows us to be able to generate images Individual cameras each collect their own image, but then we know where they are in relation to each other. We have a, a common optical system that they're built into, and because of that common optical system, we're able to stitch images together on the order of, you know, a frame per second for display scale, or we can put the whole image together in, on the order of, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. But this is a 120 degree field of view horizontally, and it's about 40 or 50 degrees vertically. And yes, we can see you there. You will not be in focus if you're at six feet That's because it. uh, it's optimized to focus around 40 meters. Um, but at this scale, you don't look that bad. Certainly, we could recognize you. Um, but what, what's interesting about this is, is we can zoom into this image. And get pretty good detail. And, and get much better behind. detail, yeah. It should, you know, the, the design of uh, the system was to approach around 60 microradians. The idea, in order to get a good stitched image, and normal orientations, you have to have something interesting so you can get features off of it. This camera, there's always at least 10 cameras that have no features at all because you're looking at the sky, you're looking at something here. You know, so in a traditional sense, it actually wouldn't work well with a stitched image without having some prior knowledge of where those cameras are actually oriented. I mean, there's basically, there's three major challenges that, that you need to uh, make high pixel count cameras. Uh, one is you have to have optics uh, that, that's capable of uh, capturing this kind of resolution. And so that's what the project was really about, was making this novel kind of optics. Uh, the second is you have to have that many pixels. And what's enabling for this project is that the cost per pixel has dropped um, by, you know, seven orders of magnitude since the first digital cameras were, were uh, introduced. Um, and then the third thing is to have the information backbone that can handle this kind of data. And that, you know, people have demonstrated processing with gigapixel images taken in scan systems the last couple of years, so it shows that it's possible to do some things with gigapixel images. But the point of this technology is really to show that there's, there's this fountain of potential image data, and so making information systems that manage and process images is probably the primary application of information systems for the ne next 50 years. And so certainly the micro camera concept is analogous to the microprocessor concept, but more than that, it's exactly the same thing because each micro camera has a microprocessor in it. And so really this is a parallel computer that just happens to be a camera that in addition to the cores, each node has a sensor node. And so it's, it's, it's directly analogous to a, a parallel processor, a parallel computer. There's many interesting problems. From purely the image formation perspective, we have to adjust the parameters of the system as they change. So even the thermal constraints will cause where each of these individual cameras point, uh, they'll cause variations in that. So what we need to do is make models that take into account where each individual camera points. Every time we move it, things get shaken up a bit. On, on the micro camera, this is the camera without the optics. And then these optics have to be made it up very precisely. Since you're 1.4 micron pixels, if you're off by a micron or two on this interface, then, or if it flexes even a micron or two, then your registration is going to be off. Next generations of the camera are going to be color. In fact, it's more expensive to get it black and white because Aptina worked with us to get us uh, monochrome versions of the, of the sensor. Um, but because we just wanted to have as much throughput of the light as we can, uh, so it, it's simpler for us to do it in color, but uh, um, we did it in black and white because we wanted to just be focused on, on resolution in this, this go-around.